What up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Funboxing with Will. I'm your host Will with H2O Co. Film and Photo and uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. Uh, here on this channel I like to do reviews or unboxings of different tech but lately I've been seeing a lot of these EDC videos, everyday carry videos, what's in your pocket videos and I just decided that it you know it's something that I've always found interesting and I figured I would go ahead and finally do one of my own. This is my what's in your pocket video, uh, pocket dump as it were. Uh, we're gonna move on over to the coffee table real quick just so I can give you a better view of the items that I carry and uh, other than that let's get into it. Alright guys? Alrighty guys, now uh, that we're over at the table here, uh, if, if this view seems kind of strange, I apologize for that. I am uh, actually sitting in front of my couch at my coffee table. I just wanted to give you guys a close-up, in-focus view of the different gear that I'm about to show you guys, and I figured this would be the easiest way to go about doing that, as I don't have a straight-down setup yet to where I can film directly from above. So uh, like I was saying, today's video is just going to be a real quick, uh, just a what's in my pockets kind of a uh, video. I uh, recently have been getting more and more into EDC items. And I mean, we all we all have EDC items depending on who we are. Those items may differ. But everybody has things that they carry with them on a daily basis. And these are just some of the things that were in my pockets today uh, and generally are in my pockets. Now, on this table, there are going to be some uh, multiples of things like the knives that I'm going to show you. Uh, I don't carry six pocket knives around with me. That would be ridiculous. Um, although I do rotate my pocket knives throughout the week. So these are my small, very limited collection of knives that I do own. And I will always carry, I, usually I'm carrying about two knives. Uh, I'll have a backup knife and a regular pocket knife. Um, but I do, I, I swap these knives out depending on the situation or the, the attire I'm wearing or what I'm doing if I'm going to a certain event or if I'm going to go camping or whatever. Uh, I will switch these items out throughout the week. So uh, first and foremost as we get into this video, I just want to say thank you to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. I am about to round up to the 200 subscription mark right now, which is a huge deal for me. Uh, I started this channel out about eight months ago, nine months ago, didn't expect it to go anywhere, and I'm really grateful to see that people actually find the information I put out there useful. So uh, again, I appreciate every one of you guys. If you find anything in this video at all useful or helpful at all, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, I, I appreciate every single one of you guys out there. So that comes from the bottom of my heart. I really do. So getting into today's uh, video. Uh, we're talking about EDC items, just everyday carry things, um, and like I said, it differs from person to person, but for me, these are the things that I personally carry that I've noticed have made my life easier, uh, and we'll start off with my wallet. Recently, I had been going through some back problems with my, uh, I had my grandfather's wallet like a lot of us out there do. Uh, it was a trifold big bulky thing. I'd always have it in my back pocket. It took up so much real estate in my pockets and it was over cumbersome for sure. That was an understatement. Uh, I ended up getting some back problems recently and my chiropractor told me that it didn't help sitting on this brick of a wallet every day and that maybe I should look into some minimalistic options as far as wallets went. So I got online and um, the wallet that I picked, it is a knockoff version of a Ridge wallet. Uh, although it has come in very handy, it's very durable. I, I would venture to say that it's just as good as the Ridge wallet, even though I've never held a Ridge, Ridge wallet. Um, in the comparisons I've done from what I've seen, it, it's just as good. Uh, it's an ARW, uh, essentially, Ridge wallet. It looks just like the Ridge wallet. I've got the ki carbon fiber finish there, as you can see. Um, it holds up to 20 cards. It's got a money clip on the back that you can put in some cash if you want to. Uh, it's it's so lightweight that I don't even notice that I have it on half the time. Uh, it holds all of my cards, my ID, everything I need very securely. And if I need to get to an inner card, uh, I can just fan these out like this, and it works very well. Um, 
it's all around rugged. I did end up putting some blue Loctite on all of the screws just to make sure that I didn't have any screws backing out on me. Uh, that was one of the issues that I heard that these wallets can come up with. But they are RIFD blocking wallets, so that's a pretty handy thing. And again, it's so lightweight. I throw this in my front pocket. It has helped with my back problems so much since I've gotten this wallet, so it's a great buy. I paid $13 for the carbon fiber edition on Amazon as opposed to paying $160 for the Ridge wallet. I'm not about buying brand names if I can avoid it and get something just as good. So, uh, yeah, ARW, they're online, they're $13, and like I said, from what I, my experiences with the item has been, it's just as good as the Ridge Wallet, so I would definitely look into that. If you are looking for something with that Ridge Wallet aesthetic, um, or just something small, minimalistic, it's a great option. Now, to go with this, uh, I kind of got on this carbon fiber kick. So, I, I like matching things up. I, I do accessorize, even though I am a guy, I accessorize my cool guy stuff, you know. And uh, I was getting tired of carrying this bulky, big, cumbersome keychain around. And so uh, I started looking for some options to do a minimalistic keychain setup as well. And what I came our, uh, uh, came across was the DBR Tech uh, keychain organizer. And it's about this big, again, carbon fiber to match the wallet. Uh, it holds, I think it said 25 keys. It came with some extending clips. Essentially, it turns all of your keys into a Swiss Army knife. Now, this has been very useful. Uh, I found this to be a very, very awesome product. It turned my big, bulky, cumbersome keychain into literally this, and that's all I have to carry now. Uh, if I want to throw on my lanyard, it came with a very, very strong uh, carabiner clip. So I literally just clip this on a lanyard, and then I've got my lanyard to go with me. And then this has a carabiner on it too. I can hook this up to my pants. I can hook it up wherever. Great product. I love it. Um, it did take a little bit of getting used to having a handle essentially on all of my keys. But once I got used to having that little extra leverage on the keys, uh, I didn't overturn them. I, I, I did a couple times overturn them in the beginning. But uh, once I got used to that, my muscle memory kicked in. It's been a fairly, fairly easy adjustment. And uh, I, I just love it. I can't tell you enough how much I love it. I have all my keys in a tight little concealed place. I don't have to have this huge mass of metal flogging around everywhere, making a lot of noise. And it keeps down on the jingling a little bit, so I don't sound so much like a reindeer when I'm walking up to people. Uh, I know it's Christmas season, but I don't like wearing jingle bells all the time. So that is the keychain. And then uh, sticking with that carbon fiber uh, element that I really, that aesthetic that I really enjoy. Um, I recently got into higher end knives. I was given a Spyderco paramilitary that I'm going to show you here in a second. And uh, it was given to me by my uncle as a birthday gift. And I just, I, I never really understood why certain knives were so expensive or anything about the materials that they were made out of until recently. I started learning a lot more about that and, and, as such, I, I wanted better quality. Uh, no matter what you're doing, if the tool you have in your hand is a good high quality tool, it will last longer, it will do better all around, it'll make the job easier, and so I feel it's like it's worth it on certain things to spend that extra couple bucks. And uh, in suit with that, I went ahead and picked up this. Now this is a carbon fiber uh, overlay on G10 with aluminum, or I'm sorry, titanium skeletonized handles, and then it's got the G10 with the carbon fiber overlay over the uh, skeletonized steel handles, or I'm sorry, titanium handles. It's got ball bearings, ceramic ball bearings with a 9CR18 MOV blade, and the, here, let me get this in focus for you. There you go. It is a gorgeous knife. Um, it's pretty lightweight for as big as it is. It's not too big in the hand. Uh, it might scare some people if you walk up and pull this out when you're, they ask you if you have a knife on them that they can open a box and you come out with this. It might be a little bit big. Uh, so again, that's why I always carry two knives with me. Um, I'll explain that in a second. But yeah, it is a great knife. The action on it is super smooth. Uh, its edge retention is very good, very good edge retention. Um, I've been using it for about two and a half weeks now. I haven't had to sharpen it yet. 
So I've been very happy with this. I open a lot of packages, uh, cut through tape, stuff of that nature, you know. And it's the uh, Civivi Backlash. Now this was a $51 knife after taxes. I think I paid like $60 for it or something like that. It is a great purchase. And what you're getting for the money is, from what I've been told, eight years ago this would have been a $200 knife. But because certain brands have been coming out, such as Civivi, they've been giving really a new gold standard to what a budget knife should be. And um, it's it's just changed the market a lot recently. So uh, I've been told that I'm very lucky to have gotten into knife collecting at this particular junction in time because of how good quality you can receive for the little cost. And so uh, that is... Generally, this is my number two. This is the secondary knife that I, I loved to carry. So... It's, it's between this and the paramilitary, too, when I wake up in the morning. Which knife am I going to carry kind of a deal? Uh, and, yeah, that's that's that knife. Uh, then going to the paramilitary, number two. This is a Spyderco knife. It is a amazingly durable knife. It is high quality. This is a $200 knife. This is the knife that got me started in collecting knives. My uncle gave this to me not too long ago. Uh, let me see if I can get this in focus here. It's just a gorgeous, all-around gorgeous knife. Um, it's made out of S30V steel, which is a powdered steel. Uh, essentially, powdered steels, they, they take powdered elements, metals, and they can add in levels of chromium, levels of um, carbon. They can pretty much adjust the metal to suit their specific needs when they make these blades. And because of that, the, the blade retention on this, I have been using this knife for three months now, and not once have I had to sharpen it. It is still razor sharp. Now, there are some caveats with this knife, uh, like the blade, the tip of the blade, if you can tell, is super fine point. So let me see if I can get that, yeah, right there. It's a super fine point knife. So if I was to try to pry anything with this, I can guarantee you it would break the tip of this knife. Um, but you know, use your tools for what they're meant for. Don't use tools and don't abuse tools, and they'll last you a while. Uh, it's again G10 on the uh, scales with a steel skeletonized liner in the handle. Uh, I believe this one is on brass washers, not ball bearings, but it's still it's drop shut. Uh, the blade weight will drop shut. It's a one-handed use life for sure. You can do a lot of cool things with it, like the spider flick. I'm sorry, I messed that up the spider flick or you can even do something called the spider drop and they're just ways to open the knife and mess around and try to be cool in front of your friends they're not important but it's nice to be able to have that ease of access to the knife one-handed when you like uh, when you need it that is one of my rules of a knife if I'm going to spend money on a knife or own a knife I need to be able to operate it one-handed uh, and honestly if this had some carbon fiber on it I, this would be my number one knife choice for EDC every day, all day long, <laughs> you know. So that's the paramilitary too. Now, going into some of the other knives I have, I have a couple more knives here to show you guys. Uh, again, going with Civivi, this is the Civivi Dogma. I'm sorry, not the Dogma. This is the Ortis, the Civivi Ortis. Now, this is the budgetest of budget knives that Civivi offers on their lineup of knives. This knife is made from an F... NR or FRN nylon polymer. That's what the handle's made out of. Now, it's again 9CR18 MOV, which is a really good steel. I find it to be really close to D2 as far as edge retention versus strength and durability, except for it's a little easier to sharpen. Um, it, it's got the steel liner with the ceramic ball bearings and the liner lock. Again, the action is just like all Civivi knives, super smooth, super easy one-handed operation. Uh, the knife is fall shut, the blade is anyways. Uh, it This is usually the secondary knife. I'll carry either the Backlash or the Paramilitary 2, and then I'll throw this in my back pocket as well. Uh, this is usually the secondary knife that I carry. It is just a great backup, and as far as a budget EDC knife, you cannot beat the quality that this is for $37. Uh, again, found it on Amazon. Super cheap. I love it. Uh, my next knife is, this is just a cheapo knife. It is a Firebird uh, Gonzo. 
again it has that really awesome carbon fiber scaling on the handles that I love it matches my wallet and my keychain so a lot of times you'll see this is my secondary knife in my pocket uh, it's got the G lock or access lock on the back so it's not a liner lock but it is very easily a one hand motion lock with a closed drop closed blade uh, it's only got like a two and a half inch blade something small again this is way less intimidating if I'm in the office and somebody asks me for a blade to cut open a box, this is probably what I'm going to hand them as opposed to my backlash that's like three times bigger. It just seems less intimidating, you know. So uh, that is usually the knife that I hand people. Plus, since it was only $24 and it, like I said, it's a cheapo gonzo knife, I don't mind other people using it. If they break it, they break it. No big deal. Moving on to my second to last knife. Again, it's another small knife. These are the knives that I take with me to work. These are the knives that I always use as a secondary knife in case somebody wants to handle a knife, needs a knife, whatever. Uh, this is the CRKT Drifter. It came in at $22. It's just a little tiny pocket knife. Uh, this has some really crappy steel on it though. This is an 8CR13 MOV, which is notoriously quick to dull. It is uh, really easy to sharpen, but super easy to dull. It's not going to last. The, the, the edge on it isn't going to last you very long. You're going to have to sharpen this knife repetitively, constantly. But again, for something just to open up boxes or something to bring with you to work so that when somebody does ask for a knife, you have something that's not super intimidating, it's a great carry. Again, it's the CRKT Drifter uh, $22.99. Uh, and it comes with G10 scales. So again, you're getting some high quality scales uh, on a low quality steel, not too bad of a buy. Now, my favorite knife, this is the knife I carry with me if I have an event to go to, if I'm gonna dress up, if I'm gonna go out and wear a tux or a suit, or go to any kind of a formal event. I carry what I call my gentleman's carry. It is a, again, Civivi, great budget brand. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, this is the most expensive Civivi I own. This is the Bullmastiff Mini, and it is the Special Edition Damascus, which they use VG10 steel and a mixture of that and 9CR18 MOV. Uh, the blade on this, I don't know if you can see the pattern. I'm going to try to get it in focus here for you. The pattern of Damascus on this is just beautiful. I love it. It is such a gorgeous little pattern there on the steel. And it's on both sides of the steel. It's uh, it's not that crappy arc tack welded Damascus either. This is true folded Damascus. I love C uh, Civivi's Damascus lineup. All of their knives are gorgeous. Again, this is the G10 over titanium scaling, G, or titanium handle skeletonized with G10 and that gorgeous, gorgeous carbon fiber lay over uh, carbon fiber overlay in the blade. It's a pocket cleaver. It's more for chopping than slicing, I would say. Uh, it's just a great all-around knife, and it's one of my favorite knives I carry with me all the time. Well. Oh, not all the time. Like I said, if I'm in a suit or something like that. But this is the knife I'll go to for that. Uh, okay, now that's it for the knives. Uh, now we're going to get into some electronics real quick. Um, everybody has a phone. I prefer the uh, Android side of things. I, I'm not an iOS user. I hate Apple products. I, I just don't find their OS intuitive at all. And so I personally go with the Samsung uh, S series lineup of phones I have ever since I believe the S3 came out I've stuck with the Galaxy S series this particular phone is the Galaxy S10 5G um, S10 plus 5G it's just been an all-around great phone I love it. it it works great for everything I need it to um, it's got a terabyte of storage in it it's expandable storage I can actually plug this into my television and turn it into an, a desktop computer believe that or not uh, with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and it changes the entire OS onto the big screen and uh, turns it into a, a desktop format which I, I absolutely love it's nice being able to take your laptop and downsize it to the size of a smartphone and have it in your pocket uh, going along with the Samsung S10 Plus 5G, I carry the Samsung Galaxy S3 Classic watch. Uh, I am not huge into smart watches. I really only carry it for when I'm at work, if I need to get a text message or something like that. If I'm in a situation talking to a client or a customer 
and my pregnant wife wants to text me something and I need to know if it's an emergency or if it's just uh, we need milk when I get home, you know, kind of a deal. I, I can just glance down at my wrist, see the text message, know whether it's urgent or not. And I just find it very less intrusive when I'm around people. Uh, nobody likes to be around somebody who's always pulling out their phone and staring at their phone. And I just find it to be a really good workaround for that in the case that you do need to monitor your, your notifications. So that's the main reason I carry that. Uh, then I have got this nice EDC pouch. Now, a lot of people say, why would you carry a pouch with you if you're trying to get rid of a wallet? Because the wallet was too big. I don't carry this with me everywhere, but I do throw this in the truck or throw it in my front pocket occasionally. It is small enough to fit in my front pocket in most of my jeans. Uh, the cool thing is, is that it actually fits my cell phone. So my cell phone, with or without the case, can fit in it. Uh, I can also fit a pen, a tactical pen, uh, a Leatherman all-in-one, and then one of my choices of pocket knife can go in there as well. Um, and then. As the wallet only has that small money clip on it, I like this because it has a little coin purse on it. So it has a little pouch, zipper pouch, where I can throw any spare cash that I have or any uh, coins that I have with me on this. And even if I'm not using it, wearing it on my person, I can always throw it in the truck. Just have it sitting in the backpack or wherever I need it, and it's it's always coming very handy. Um, along with that, this also fits in there. I wish I had a smaller one. But for now, I'm just using a cheapo Ozark Trail Walmart flashlight. Uh, I always find it useful. Have a flashlight in your pocket, uh, in your truck, wherever. Just have easy access to a flashlight in case you need it, you know. And then my last EDC item that I carry with me absolutely everywhere I go is my 9mm handgun. Um, it is a 9mm Sky uh, CPX2. It is not a super fancy handgun, it is not a super expensive handgun, it is a what you would call a throwaway handgun. It is a $300 brand new inbox, two magazines handgun. Uh, it, it does have some issues um, with feeding rounds into the chamber if you, do, if you don't use Magtech ammo. Uh, I found using Magtech ammo I have no jams with this gun whatsoever. It's just when I run, say, cheapo Winchester ammo that I'll get some jamming issues with the gun. And usually, if you're in a situation, you want to make the first shot count anyways. Uh, so, I, I don't know. For, for $300 to have a 9mm gun on me that I don't care if it gets broken or destroyed um, or confiscated in a situation, God forbid, that I have to turn it over as evidence because I had to use it in a self-defense situation, it's not going to rip my heart out to, to have the police hold onto my gun for three months uh, because it's, it's such a cheap firearm. So uh, those are my EDC items. I'm super interested to see what's in your guys' pockets. So if you guys want to go ahead and tell me what you carry in the comments, let me know. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and try to reply to any questions you guys have. If you have any questions about any of the products that I showed you guys today, feel free again, hit me up in the comments and ask away. I, I try to get back to all of my, my viewers' questions. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and hit, them, hit me up. And other than that, that's it for today. Until next time, I hope you guys have a great afternoon. Uh, have a great day. Stay safe. And above all, stay creative, my friends. We need more of that in this world. Have a good night.